Hey, hello YouTube. Today we're going to take a look at uh, the final upgrades for this uh, Pentium PC or basically the Intel TC430HX project or whatever. But uh, we're going to add some more components to it and you can, uh, you know, get a better name for this thing, maybe the, the DOS Gaming PC. Let's just refer to it uh, as that from now on. So, I've um, got some final upgrades for it. To me, at least I think uh, these are the final upgrades. First of all, we're going to be swapping out the CPU. This is an MMX chip. This is a Pentium MMX 200. This is the fastest CPU this motherboard will take. Because I've done some uh, more research into this board and it turns out it is in fact an Intel TC430HX with the 430HX chipset. This is the A3 revision from what I can gather and uh, the particular revision of this board um, does not support the 233 chips. So we're stuck at uh, 200 megahertz. Um, the video card is not going to be that Trident that I showed in a previous video. Um, I've tested it out, the card works fine. But it's not really uh, what I really wanted to use in the system. I decided to go for this instead. After going through the bin of parts at my girlfriend's place, we found this uh, S3 Verge DX. With the uh, memory upgrade, so it has 4 megabytes of VRAM. Just regular 66 megahertz uh, EDO, I would imagine. And uh, yeah, this one works even better. It is the, uh, as you can see, the Diamond Stealth 3D 2000 Pro. Still the original sticker there. I'm going to leave that on because it's, uh, you know, patina or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so yeah, we got a VGA composite video and S video out. S video is very handy, so I can capture this thing through my capture device. Just a piece of shit, but it does have S videos. So at least we can get some uh, decent ish uh, 576i uh, video out of it because that's all the PAL region supports. So, yeah. So, I guess we should just uh, start by digging in the system here. It's very easy to remove the heatsink. This one doesn't, did not even come with any thermal compound. It doesn't really seem to matter all that much with these uh, ceramic chips. Let me just get some better light here. There we go. That's slightly better. Eh, we'll make it work. Now let's lift that up, get the chip out of there. As carefully as I possibly can. Here's the old chip, a regular Pentium. No MMX technology, just a regular ceramic one. 166 megahertz of pure power. Copyright 1992 and 93. Oh yeah. It's been a great chip, gotta say. Really worked just fine. And now we're upgrading to a Pentium MMX. 200 megahertz. Let's see, this is 2.8 volts. Okay. And the old one is just. By the way, does anyone know? This thing says Malay ES. Does that mean that this was an engineering sample or, or is that just normal? I don't know. I think these are like 3.3 volts. We'll find out. I need to uh, know that for my voltage uh, setting. I think I need to move the jumper from uh, VRE to uh, STD. I don't have an STD, don't worry about that. Um. But yeah, this is a 2.8 volt chip, so that should work on standard voltage, I think. Or maybe no, I think I should actually leave it on VRE. Well, I'll have to consult the manual for that, but uh, that's fine. We'll find out that way. Uh, we have to insert it this way. There we go. It's not exactly zero insertion force, that's what I've noticed. There we go. It's, it feels sort of cringy when I have to actually push it down in the socket, but that's just how stuff like that works. Again, I would really like to have some 486 or even 386 stuff, but it's just way too expensive. And I'd, you know, I have to, I'd have to buy it as a full system because I can't get it in parts. The parts are way overpriced, so I'm not willing to spend a couple hundred on a on a vintage system, to be honest. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna get some. Slight thermal compound on there, um, put the heatsink back on, make sure I get uh, the voltage settings and the jumper settings correct, and uh, let's see how it works. 
And then we'll install the video card and uh, take a look at that. Alrighty then. Whoops, come on. There we go. <laughs> Button is a little bit finicky. Alright, we've got an image. Place is trying. Let's go to the BIOS. Let's get it on the screen. Really need to switch displays because this one glitches out on VGA, unfortunately. Okay, I don't think this BIOS is. Okay, there we go. As you can see there, we have a Pentium MMX technology 200 megahertz. Might be a little bit overkill for what I do with the system, but you know, I played DOS games from like somewhere between 93 and 97 the most. So, you know, some of them like to have a little bit more CPU horsepower. I mean, everything runs fine, no problem. I mean, I run Duke 3D and just fine in uh, the standard Visa modes. So, that's good. You can play Death Rally. First GTA in low color mode. That's all I really did back then, anyway. So, that's all perfectly fine. And the Verge seems to work as well. Well, I kind of knew it already worked, so, because I already uh, installed it in the system and loaded a driver just to see if the cart was actually alive. It's quite important if you're uh, building a system that you know that your parts are alive before you start actually integrating them into your build. So that's good. And I would just wait for Windows 95 to boot up. For some reason it takes uh, a little while on this system. Same for Windows 3.11 for that matter. I mean, I wanted to run this system as a pure DOS and, uh, you know, just with the 3.11 for work groups whenever I needed some files from the network or Windows only programs, but, you know, in the end I thought, like, well, that's not really what would really, you know, tickles my nostalgia bone all that much. Because I kind of grew up with Windows 95 and DOS, you know, running in conjunction with each other. So. I just decided to uh, run Windows 95 anyway. I did install DOS 6.22 prior to installing Windows 95 because uh, it was a floppy edition that would not boot otherwise. So, you know, we, we were getting there. As you can see, the driver is already loaded. Is it running full resolution? Well, not really full. This is 1024 by 768 on a 1280 1024 monitor. This card will do 1280 by 1024, but I think only 256 colors. Well, it might not even. Alright, let's auto adjust because it's totally off. There we go. Yeah. It's running 1280 1024 with a Virtue DX. But uh, let's reduce that resolution back down to. Uh, 1024768 16-bit color I finally got my hands on Windows 95 in Dutch which is sort of more nostalgic to me because I never really used English OS's back in the day because quite frankly I didn't know any English and you don't really know that when English is not your main language and you're like four or five years old so yeah but the video card seems to be working fine let's just uh, take a little look you can uh, get a game up and running. Well, let's see here. What's a good test? But I'm also running the uh, AWE64 in here. Runs just fine. Um, Bucky wheels. That might be a little bit. That might be fun. Let's try that. For general media, I'm using a sound font from the MT32 because I think the uh, regular Sound Blaster FM synthesis music on this game is particularly rubbish. I'd rather run it in uh, general media with uh, emulation mode, to be honest, because it sounds just fine to me. I mean, it sounds just fine. It really sounds fantastic, rather. Just taking some bad guys out here.
There we go. Now we're rocking. That's great. Fell for my own trap. What's a trap? God damn it, I'm out of frickin' hedgehogs. Oh well. You know, this, this is actually my favorite Mario Kart knockoff. I actually played this way before Mario Kart. I actually didn't play Mario Kart until I got my GameCube in like 2003. It came violent with it. This was my go-to racing game back in the day. Pretty much this, um, and Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. Those were my favorite racing games at the time. And Death Rally, maybe. Alright. Anyway, I think you'll get the picture. And before my uh, phone actually runs out of storage. Anyway. So that is pretty much the update on the DOS gaming PC that I will be calling from now on. So yeah, our Pentium MMX CPU seems to be working just fine. Uh, after doing some research I indeed had to put it uh, or still leave it at the uh, variable voltage setting or VRE. Okay, well that was not really what I intended to do. Anyway, I'll just say uh, I'll handle that. I'm just uh, kind of blurry right now when it comes to the keyboard shortcuts. So, that's pretty much the upgrade. Hope you all enjoy this video. Um, I'll make a full video recording some gameplay from this machine. This machine. This machine. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.